In this video, we're going to discuss how to go from certified to hired and get your first tech job. Maybe you're AWS certified or Azure certified or Google certified or Cisco certified or certified by another vendor, and you're still looking to get your first technology job. I wanna help you, and that's the topic of this video. My name is Mike Gibbs. I've been an enterprise architect for approximately 20 years and I've spent two decades helping people get their first tech job, get promoted in tech and build their technology careers. And I really wanna help you. And we're gonna talk about how to go from certified to hired. And uh, there's a big difference between certifications and getting hired. And I'll tell you my personal story when I started my tech career and what I had to do. And then I'm going to tell you what you needed to do. So about 25 years ago, a little longer than that now, I was practicing internal medicine. I was a nurse practitioner and I just love networking. And I wanted to become a network engineer and network architect. I didn't know the difference at the time, but I love networking. So I can tell you what I did. I went and got six different certifications or a bunch of them. I got Microsoft Certified uh, Professional and Microsoft Certified Systems Engineer Certified. I got a CCNA, a Cisco Certified Network Associate, a Cisco Certified Network Professional, CCNP, a Cisco Certified Design Associate, and a Cisco Certified Design Professional. And guess what? I applied for a whole bunch of jobs and I got rejected by every single one. And then I decided to make a change in my strategy and almost overnight, I was hired. And I'm going to tell you what happened to me. And then I'm going to explain it from my context, what you need to do for you. So when I couldn't get hired, I actually spoke to 50 different tech recruiters. And I asked them, what do hiring managers desire in the absolute best network engineer? Someone they would love so much, they would hire on the spot. And I compiled myself a list. One of the recruiters actually connected me with a Cisco certified internet expert that was actually working as a network architect, which is the biggest favor in the world. And I had the chance to speak with a CCI network architect. And in those days, there were very few CCIs. Actually, there still are my CCI number is 7417. And when I spoke to that network architect, he said, Mike, here's the reason you're having trouble. He said, you've got a lot of Cisco certifications, which is great. He said, you know a lot about Cisco, which is great. And he said, Mike, you don't know networking. I said, what do you mean? I don't know networking. I have all these certifications. And he said, Mike, I'm going to ask you the Cisco questions. And I, and I want to see how you answered them. And I answered them beautifully. And he said, see, I knew you knew Cisco with all those certifications. And he said, now I'm going to ask you networking. And he said to me, Mike, he said, in the IP header, there's a type of service bit. How could I use that to make sure that critical traffic would go through versus other traffic if a worm were to overwhelm the network? And I honestly had no idea where to begin. And then the CCIA asked me another question and he said, Mike, what would you do if you had an EIGRP network with various components and you had about 5,000 routes in the routing table? What would you do if links were flapping to make sure that the network wouldn't have a problem and the EIGRP network wouldn't have uh, computational issues? And I looked at him and I had no idea. And he said, Mike, that's what I'm trying to tell you. He says, you know what's in the certification, but you don't know networking. And he said, here's what you've done. He said, you passed the certifications. He said, I can see you've done a lot of configuration. And he asked me, and I said, I'd done about 400 hours of hands-on configuration labs. And he said, but you only know how to. You don't know the why. And he said, what happens if when you make a change in the system, he said, if you're unaware of the other 8,000 things that are going on, you can immediately take down that network and cost the business millions of dollars. He said, if I asked you this and you didn't understand the rationale or what was going on in the system, he said, again, you can destroy the network. He said, it's not enough to know how to configure. He said, the management needs to know that you know Everything that goes behind the decision, if you make this change, what will be the implication of the change on the system? If you do this, what will be the change? How the technology works, he said, because if you don't know this, when it's going to break, how are you going to fix it? How are you going to figure it out? So he gave me a list of things to learn, and I learned them all. I mean, I learned them all. This was my list. I built checkoff lists. I spent all day, all night studying, and I learned it as fast as I could. It took about six months. And uh, as soon as I went on my first interview, I was immediately hired as a senior network engineer in my first job. Now, the key was I had a list of knowing exactly what to learn, both technical things, and I was also told non-technical things. In fact, 
I was told that if it was a brand new job, and this is true advice, and I've seen it in my 20 years of coaching, if it's your first job, not only do you have to have the uh, capabilities to do the job, the actual competency, but you also have to have the things that employers want, the desirability traits, because you have to be so good, you want them to forget about your new or just look past the weakness of your new. And what employers are typically looking for here, I can tell you right now, is uh, can they trust you? Are you energetic, enthusiastic, passionate about the work? Are you able to get along with others? Are you emotionally intelligent? Do you communicate well? Will you be easy to work with? Will you go above and beyond? And typically employers are looking for this. So make sure you consider that and how you show your face to the world. So that's what I did. So what should you do? You're certified. You want to get hired? Great. You can do it. There's nothing holding you back. You just need to do a few things. The first thing you're going to need to do is get a real skills list, an actual skills list for the job you actually desire. That's going to be very different than the certifications list. And on your list, you'll need to have technical skills and the non-technical skills that are going to be required for your job. Now, where do you get this list? If you want to be a cloud architect, an enterprise architect, a security architect, an AI architect, I run a free webinar once a week and uh, we do it on Zoom. We'll go over these roles, what you need, the skills that you need, and uh, you, you can ask questions there. And you can register that for the link in the description. For architecture careers, I've got you covered and they're all free and I'm happy to help you. But if it's not an architecture career, then ask someone that is a leader in their field. And here's what I mean a leader, not someone that's got a lot of social media followers. I mean someone that's made it and been highly successful in the role you want. Because this person knows the skills you need to rise to the top and not just get hired because they're already at the top. Versus other people that are not at the top, they won't know the skills that you actually need because if they did, they'd be at the top themselves. So who could you ask? Uh, for architects, if you don't want to come to us, and I'd love you to join our, our free webinar, you can ask a principal architect or a sting, distinguished architect in the role. How about if you're an engineer, ask a principal engineer or a distinguished engineer, someone that's made it to the top of the engineering world. Or ask a manager or director who hires specifically for the role you desire. And here's the reason. They know what they're looking for and they're going to give you a good list. So that's going to help you get your list. I also come online once per week, uh, live on YouTube, typically Wednesdays to answer career questions. Feel free to come and ask me questions and I'll do anything I can to help you. But let's get back to things if it's not an architect role, because I want to make sure that you're successful. You're going to have to get the right kind of competency. So that's your full list of skills. And it's not just the how-to stuff, whatever it is, it's learning how the technology works, the strengths and weaknesses of the various types of technologies, the technology's breaking points, the trade-offs between similar versus different technologies. Again, it's going to be deeper. You can't learn this, be a hands-on. You're going to have to learn it by learning the tech and truly studying it. So we have to make sure that we have the right set of skills. Now, after we've got the right set of skills, we have to really make sure that we have the skills and be able to prove these skills to the world. So there's a level of hands-on skills that every role needs. Now, every role has different hands-on. For example, a cloud architect, enterprise architect, solutions architect, AI architect, they're not going to be configuring any technology. They're not going to code. They're not going to configure. They're not going to implement. It's not part of their career. But they will be leading and facilitating a meeting, presenting at an executive briefing, presenting at a conference, designing architectural documentation, leading an architecture team, uh, and many other things, creation of architectural artifacts. So you're going to have to get that kind of hands-on experience if you want to be an architect. But what if you want to be an engineer? You're going to have to build something real life and real world. Now, this is going to look a lot different than something you'd find in a certification. In a certification, they're going to make it look like it's a single vendor environment, and that single vendor is the only thing that's in the real world. Reality couldn't be further from the truth. For example, if you've just done an AWS Solutions Architect Professional, you think the world revolves around AWS. And then you have an enterprise client that is, has a data center, two different clouds. And uh, 
<laughs> they have a thousand applications and 200,000 IP addresses and 10 different security vendors and 10 different vendors for this and 50 different vendors for this. And that's the reality. So if you're going to build something real, it's going to have to look real. If you're an engineer, if you're an architect, you're going to design a presentation or to create a reference architecture, a piece of thought leadership. Great. But this is the kind of right kind of hands on experience that you need for your job. So make sure you do the right kind of a project. Well, a cloud architect might uh, design a reference architecture for generative AI security or a hybrid multi-cloud architecture that's going to drive digital transformation for a bank. These are cloud architecture projects. But let's talk about maybe a cloud engineer's project by comparison. Maybe a cloud engineer will build a multi-cloud uh, environment that has 30 applications running on various application operating systems. Some run in virtual machines, some run in containers. Uh, the cloud engineer builds and implements a backup strategy for the organization. Then the cloud engineer secures the uh, secures the environment, and then the and then the cloud provider documents the technology. I'm sorry, the cloud engineer would document the technology choices that they made, the trade offs they considered, and why they choose chose the specific applications the specific operating systems, the specific infrastructure, and publish that. And when people see that, that's when we see competency. So when we do these kind of projects, we actually have the opportunity to learn. We have the opportunity to better our skills. And what we want to do is we want to document this. We want to dress it up and we want to put it on social media to prove to the world you can do the job because you're actually doing the job. And that's different than a cloud engineer trying to set up a WordPress or site or a cloud architect setting up a WordPress site. That's not the work of these roles. That's junior level world that are roles that a, a web developer might do for their own things where their role and their knowledge is about their web development and just sticking it on the cloud is 2% of what they do. And the easy is part of what they do. So again, we're going deep. And when you create this, create your documents, make it look good, proofread it, use good graphics, reference various sources of information, and show to the world you're good. Now, when you do this, you'd be surprised. Hiring managers will be reaching out to you. Tech recruiters will be able to reach out to you. And because of this, you have the opportunity in many cases to communicate directly to the hiring manager, directly to the person that might be willing to hire you. Now, this is your best opportunity because now you're going straight to the hiring manager. You're not blocked by HR, which is another story, which we'll talk about in a minute. But uh, you're showing yourself to the management team and to recruiters. Now you talk to these people, you start scheduling your interviews prior to even filling out an application. Because if the hiring manager meets you, likes you, has an open role and feels you're competent, that's it. You're called then you're getting hired. And in many cases, you can do that before you even apply for the job. So why do I want you to go out there? Do I want you to show who you are in public? When you apply for jobs, what's going to happen is HR will typically review your resume, an internal recruiter, an internal HR person. Now, human resource people have no idea what you do as a technology professional at all. They uh, may know your salary. They may know what kind of benefits to pay you. They may know how to protect against legal issues and motivate employees, what have you, but they know nothing about the tech role. So the only thing they have is on a job description and, uh, and the job description in many cases is going to be wrong. So you want to be able to go straight to that hiring manager whenever possible. So you don't have to apply for a million and one things and get auto rejected. And I'm not saying don't apply, but I'm saying go out there and build a source of information. People coming to you, go out there and market yourself like a business, show your value and show how good you are. And the world will also come to you. And that way you don't have to just apply for jobs, even which may not be the most successful way you can use recruiters and hiring managers and go out there and network and network for success. So that's one of the reasons I want you to get that hands-on experience, whatever it is for your job. And hands-on experience may be building, it may be documenting, but whatever it is, get that relevant experience and go out there and prove it to the world that you know what you're doing. Go out there and show how good you are. Now, when you finally get an interview through this strategy, here's what I want you to know. You have to be perfect. I mean perfect on the interview. When you interview someone and they're great, you start forgetting about things that they're not great about because they have so many great attributes and little weaknesses uh, disappear. 
When you like someone, for example, everything about them you like. But if you dislike someone, it doesn't matter what it is, you're going to dislike things about them anyway. So I want to make sure that that interview likes you. So go in there and master your interview techniques. The interview can make a $50,000 difference in many cases or more in your salary based upon how desirable you are. So practice your interview, get an interview coach, study interview techniques, because the interview is your opportunity and you've got to win this opportunity. So I would suggest investing in some interview training. I know I did many years and I've been coaching others for it now, but I just want you to have a maximum impact interview and win. Now, as soon as that interview is over, write a thank you note. It shows your class. It shows your willingness to go above and beyond, to be better and respect the manager. And uh, it's another opportunity for you to sell yourself. So what are we really talking about here? We're talking about the difference between certification skills and reality skills. We're also talking about what hiring managers want. And when you're new and you don't have that experience, you've got to have those other attributes that hiring managers want. We're talking about getting the relative experience, the right experience for your career, because being experienced in someone else's career is of no value to you. For example, if you went at a physician, but somebody had trained to be an airplane pilot, you're not going to go that a person as a physician. They know how to fly planes, not practice medicine. So you want to get that right experience. And then you want to show the world that you've actually done it, that you're actually doing it, and then you're actually ready. And then by doing that, you have the opportunity for people to come to you. And then you master that interview, you master your sales skills, you master how to sell yourself, and now you're hired. And now you have an absolutely wonderful career that you're going to love. If you'd like to get your first cloud architect job, network architect job, AI architect job, security architect job, or any other kind of architect, Join us on a free architecture webinar. Uh, the link is in the description of these videos. We hold them live on Zoom. We'll go over the role. We'll talk about what we do, the skills you need, and then we'll spend about 90 minutes answering any questions you have live on Zoom, anything we can do to assist you in your architecture career. We also have a list of ebooks and things to even help you on the interview and skills list for various careers in the description of this video. You can download them. They're all free. Or sign up for them. They'll be emailed to you, and they're all free. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, subscribe to our channel, and hit the bell to be notified of new videos to assist you in your IT architecture career or your tech career. This is Mike Gibbs signing off for now, and I look forward to seeing you in a free webinar or in another video. Take care, everyone.